Pray with me as you will. God of joy, hope, and compassion, we thank you for this time of graduation, a time when we intentionally examine both the past and the future, but also a time where we are called to pause and remain present to the love and support that surrounds us. As we prepare to walk across the stage and receive our diplomas, let us remember with gratitude those who have helped make this moment a reality. We thank you for our families and the many others who have sacrificed and worked to see us through this part of our journey. We thank you for our faculty and staff who have challenged, cared for, and mentored us. We thank you for our fellow students who have taught us the meaning of friendship, collaboration, and community. Today, as we remember the challenges we have faced and all that we have accomplished, we also understand that our lives move into a new chapter where there will be more challenges to face and more will be demanded of us in order to love our neighbors well. In our new endeavors, provide us the patience and hope as we begin to pursue meaningful vocations, the courage to always move towards the common good with peace, service, and gratitude, and the, str the strength to resist greed and selfishness in a world that thrives on competition. As we move from one chapter to another today, may we be a people who have peace in the present and hope for the future. And in whatever we take as our next best step, may we love justice, seek kindness, and move towards compassion in who we are and what we do. Amen. You may now be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, trustees, members of the faculty and staff and administration of Pfeiffer University, families of graduating seniors, friends of graduating seniors, seniors, supporters of graduating seniors and graduates, welcome to the 2022 commencement exercises of Pfeiffer University. I expect that your applause will be uh, frequent and robust today because quite frankly, you have earned this and you've worked hard for this. Graduates, we know you have been looking forward to this day. We are so proud of you, your accomplishments, and we congratulate you for reaching this milestone in your journey, in your academic career. Uh, the diploma that you will receive in a few minutes validates your hard work and your diligence. Uh, it validates the university's confidence in you, uh, your knowledge and your abilities. But it is a symbol of a number of other things. We want you to be proud of the work that you have completed uh, but we want you to remember for a second that you did not get to this point alone. Uh, and I am talking uh, about more than those group projects that Dr. Gross and the business department put some of you through last week. Yes, I heard about those. Uh, but I also challenge you to take a moment, graduates, take a moment uh, and look around you. Uh, stand up, graduates, just for a second. Keep standing, keep standing. Uh, not the point. That was great job clapping, but not the point. Uh, graduates, turn around and find somebody that you love right now. Turn around and find somebody that you love. All right, all right. Here's the deal. Everybody out there, stay quiet. Graduates, we want you to give your supporters a round of applause.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Today is the product. Today is the product in most cases, uh, not only of your hard work, but the hard work and the dreams and the sacrifices, the sacrifices of your loved ones, professors, mentors on the staff, your coaches, parents, of course, but for some of you, grandparents, for some of you, aunts and uncles, for some of you, a scholarship benefactor, for all of these things and for your hard work, for your ability to capitalize on this love and support, we give thanks today. Finally, I want you to pay one uh, more bit of attention uh, to what we actually call this ceremony. We do not call this graduation. We call it commencement, commencement. Commence uh, in its Latin roots actually means beginning, uh, not an ending. Uh, rather than call this graduation, uh, for whatever reason, rather than referring this to, as, as, to this as a conclusion, our forebears in higher education chose to think of this moment as a beginning, a launching pad. So we know you'll go your separate ways, but I challenge you to remember these beginning moments. Remember your cohort, remember your peers in your senior class, stay in touch with your professors, stay in touch with the staff here. So much is going on here today. There's a wonderful moment, almost 200 uh, students in the undergraduate program graduating. Uh, but we don't want to forget uh, that others are graduating today. Uh, people who studied on our Charlotte campuses, uh, 19 students becoming physician assistants uh, in this moment who studied at a new campus in Albemarle, North Carolina. And, and we'll say more about that in a minute. Uh, I sent an email out uh, just a couple of weeks ago to professors and department chairs. Uh, just say, what are your students doing? Uh, these, these people are the leaders of the next generation. Uh, Stanley County Public Schools, Randolph County Public Schools, the Cone Healthcare System in the Triad area, the UNC Healthcare System, uh, internships at Uwari Bank of Stanley County, uh, a sea turtle hospital in Marathon, Florida, the Maxwell uh, Foundation that gives out the award to the top college quarterback uh, every year. We have two sports management students uh, working there this summer, students with graduate school acceptance letters to Pfeiffer uh, at Albemarle, Pfeiffer at Charlotte, Duke University, uh, three students going to Wake Forest University in the fall uh, a student going to the University of Georgia, just to name a few institutions. You will serve and you will serve well. We know and I hope that you know that this is but the commencement, but the beginning of a long and prosperous life of service. Okay, everyone in the room, a couple of final housekeeping items. At this time, uh, we would like for you, if you have not already done so, to silence your cell phones or other electronic devices. Uh, the stock market is closed today, right, Mr. Dick? Yes, um, and um, I don't believe uh, afternoon ESPN-driven uh, NCAA tournament events have started, so I don't want to hear the Sports Center theme coming from any of your phones. Listen, seriously, take a moment. We've talked about the beginning. We'll talk about uh, the future. Live in the present. This is a sacred time for us to celebrate. Each graduate deserves to hear his or her name called without the distraction uh, or other things. Um, parents and loved ones, Take time to soak this in. We will supply you uh, with scores and stock quotes and even photographs of your graduate after the ceremony. 
Uh, now, for the last few months, you've thought a great deal about today and the future. I invite each of you, students, parents, loved ones, faculty, staff, and others to enjoy the present. Thank you for coming to the village of Meisenheimer. Let's have a great ceremony. Ending here, and it is so exciting. I did this once before in this very room. I graduated, and all there in the bleachers was my family. So I know how you feel, and I know how you feel. And now I know how the trustees feel when they come to this very exciting time. I'm thrilled to be able to welcome all of you who are family members and friends of our students. Your presence means so much to our students for you've seen them through a pandemic. My parents didn't have to do that. They just needed to get me from Cherryville, North Carolina to Meisenheimer once or twice a year because I didn't have a car and daddy did. You've seen them through social distancing, far beyond anything that we have ever imagined. It's wonderful, isn't it? To be able to witness your graduates' accomplishments and give them a great send off into their futures. The trustees want to express our gratitude for all you've done for your students during their years at Pfeiffer. Without your support and encouragement, we might not have had today's opportunity to celebrate together. Finally, I'm thrilled to welcome all of the students who are graduating today. I remember when I crossed the stage at commencement, I told somebody as we lined up, before commencement began at my graduation, my dad could not sit still, he was so excited. So the whole family sat in the bleachers except for daddy. He went out into the lobby and paced for the half hour before it all began. And every time he saw a face he didn't recognize, he said, my daughter's graduating, how about yours? I'm sure that you have family members and friends who have been doing the same thing. And I know you appreciate that. There is only one more thing to say. When you remember this day and this event, remember it as the beginning of your brand new grown up lives, the beginning of your future that is filled with enough hope, accomplishment, and faith to be shared with your families and the world as you lead all of us beyond boundaries. Welcome to the world. And make some sense at last 
This is the moment when all I've done, all of the dreaming, scheming, and screaming become one. This is the day, see it sparkle and shine. Destiny beckoned, I never reckon second best. I won't look down, I must not fall. This is a moment, the greatest moment of them all. This is the moment, damn all the this day or never, I'll sit forever with the gods. When I look back, I will always recall, moment for moment, this was a moment, the greatest moment of them all. Good morning, everyone. I'm Megan Hobbick, the chaplain here at Pfeiffer. Scott Eisenagel was both an employee and student at Pfeiffer. He passed away on March 9th of 2022 after a long illness. I had the privilege and honor to provide the eulogy for his memorial service back in March, and I'm honored to share a few of those words with you this morning. As many of you know, um, in this room, Scott was an eclectic guy. He had so many interests. He loved trinkets and gardening. One person told me he once gave them a pencil holder made out of a three and a half inch floppy disk because that person mentioned that it was cool. Another told me that he gave her a cactus when they first began working together here and that she's not a plant person, but that cactus survived 15 years on neglect and the fact that Scott would come and check on it. Scott loved trinkets and he loved gardening, but it is apparent through his actions that he was kind and generous and had a deep need and love for bringing his friends um, joy through what brought him joy. Scott was also brilliant. He had a love for history and a passion for looking at the complexity of the human condition. And his breadth of knowledge gave him depth and conversation. Scott thought deeply about the perils of humanity, but the, idea, but the ideas that if we take the time to grapple with can ultimately make us better human beings. Friends, Scott was someone full of depth complexity, and soulfulness. He could always make you laugh, but he was always also someone who wore his emotions on his sleeves and could run the gamut of feelings from mo one moment to the next. As his friend Scott Perry told me, Scott was someone who overcame whatever he was dealing with to help whoever needed help. And that's what ultimately gave him strength, joy, and peace. Scott was authentically and beautifully human. Dr. Minot, it is my understanding that the faculty have approved the awarding of Scott's degree posthumously. 
Dr. Thompson, would you please join us? Reverend Hobbick, thank you for those words. Indeed, the faculty in Scott's department have approved the conferring of the Bachelor of Arts degree upon our dear friend Scott Eisnoggle posthumously. Scott touched many lives and he has been deeply missed. Dr. Thompson was his advisor and I present this to you on behalf of the family in memory of Scott. Thank you. I will miss having someone uh, work on my computer in my office as I fumble around, but also ask me, uh, hey, that theologian at Princeton, uh, Cornell West, have you read his last book? What, a, what an example of a lifelong learner. Uh, students, I would, I would challenge you all uh, wherever you go, whatever you field, whatever field you enter, to be lifelong learners. It is my great honor to introduce in this moment a lifelong learner uh, and this year's commencement speaker, uh, uh, Roger Dick. Uh, Roger Dick is uh, President and Chief Executive Officer of Uwari Capital Corporation, the holding company of Uwari Bank, Uwari Bank Mortgage, and Uwari Bank Investment Group. He was the leader in the development of the bank in 1983 and has been a driving force, positioning the organization as a strong competitor in the region, while also focusing on the well-being of this community. Uh, the bank has grown into a 13 branch bank or so uh, with locations throughout Stanley County, but also in Cabarrus County, Mecklenburg County, Anson County, and perhaps others. I hope my Uwari Bank friends will bear with me on that. Mr. Dick in 2011 was recognized as a 2011 Main Street champion for his untiring efforts to support revitalization and preservation projects in downtown areas. Uh, in 2014, the Stanley Chamber of Commerce named him the Citizen of the Year. And in the same year, he was recognized by the North Carolina Wildlife Federation as Water Conservationist of the Year. Uh, this last piece of information, uh, information about community involvement provides me with a segue to uh, introduce you to uh, an important aspect of Mr. Dick's bio uh, from my perspective. Uh, Roger is a Pfeiffer man. He is a Pfeiffer man. He is not a Pfeiffer graduate, uh, but he is a Pfeiffer person. Uh, Roger's son, uh, Jonathan, uh, majored in business at Pfeiffer. His daughter, Cynthia, class of 2012, majored in English at Pfeiffer and is a school teacher in the Mecklenburg system. And uh, importantly to me, uh, Roger is a member of the board of trustees at Pfeiffer and chair of the investment committee. Uh, after years of uh, uncertainty surrounding uh, the endowment at Pfeiffer University, which promotes scholarship money for you, my friends. Uh, Roger has taken a serious look at our endowment, our holdings, and is propelling us uh, into a new era uh, characterized by good stewardship. I will say, and this may get Roger um, stoned when he gets up here, uh, Roger is a major reason that I accepted the presidency of Pfeiffer University. Uh, at the weekend uh, of my interview here, uh, I walked around Meisenheimer and met a group of professors and staff members that knew the students by name and wanted to invest deeply in their careers. 
And I thought to myself, well, this is, this is great. This is perfect. It's in my home state. Uh, it's a very intimate campus. Uh, but I've kind of I've got that part in, in Alabama. I've, I've kind of got that where I am. Uh, I was taken downtown to Albemarle uh, by the search committee, and I was shown uh, a lot, a vacant lot in the middle of the downtown area. And uh, they talked about a building that they wanted to construct and, and two new academic programs that would go in the building. I must confess to you, I was doubtful until I sat in the boardroom of the bank with Roger, and he pledged to me that uh, Pfeiffer had not only the backing uh, of alumni and trustees, but Pfeiffer would have the backing of an entire city and the chief banking institution in that city. And let me tell you, uh, I've written a lot more eloquent words than this, and this is not something that's written down, but Roger has your back and he has our back, and we are grateful for you for coming here. We talked that day about economic development, for sure, but he spoke passionately about people and the people of Stanley County. He talked about some things the county is struggling with was struggling with, childhood obesity, uh, the mortality rate of, of men in, in this county that get prostate cancer, uh, the opioid addiction crisis at times, and more than economics, and I enjoyed that aspect, uh, I found that I was encountering an incredibly well-read person uh, who didn't seek knowledge for the sake of knowledge. He sought wisdom for the sake of human beings and the improvement of a region. He majored in business at Appalachian State, has the MBA from UNC Charlotte, but those are not the only courses he took in college, young men and young women. Uh, you might want to discuss with him on another occasion uh, something he uh, pursued as a minor, uh, religion and philosophy, or a trip with Boy Scouts, uh, taking them down the river uh, in a canoe uh, and getting a little lost on one occasion, if I recall correctly. You might encounter uh, when you meet him, uh, someone who says to you, you know, uh, I just went to the Holocaust Museum in, in Washington, DC, uh, and uh, I want to, I'd like to talk to you about that more than I'd like to talk to you about the bank. Ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker for this year's commencement is a champion for education, a champion for a kinder form of capitalism, and a champion for our community, Roger Dick. We could. Hello, Falcons. This is a great day. And it's good to be with you this morning. I am honored to deliver this commencement to the class of 2022. It has been quite a journey for you to get to this day. The last four years have been excruciatingly enlightening while also exhilarating. Our struggle with COVID, a world and nation divided, democracy under threat. On the positive side of things, we have new vaccines for malaria and COVID, attachments and advancements in green sustainable energy technologies, SpaceX, and NASA making oxygen on Mars. The last four years have been filled with the lowest lows and the highest highs. We are here today celebrating a high point. The first graduating class of Pfeiffer's Physician Assistance Program and a whole host of new servant leaders, nurses, business leaders, educators, counselors, and many others of you all going into the world to fulfill your purpose. Using the intellectual gifts 
God has given you, aided now by the education and preparation you have obtained here at Pfeiffer. Your graduation is the start of your, of your life's journey, which is an endless series of graduations where you will continue to learn and add wisdom to go along with your knowledge. The falcon in ancient cultures is a symbol of the sunrise, vision. It sees clearly and positively. An appropriate mascot for this class and your generation, for you have been born and are coming to adulthood at a founding moment in our history. You are standing at a new gateway to the future. The Pfeiffer University graduating class of 2022 is part of a special generation. So what makes you special? In 1997, Neil Howell and William Strauss wrote the book, The Fourth Turning, which predicted America would enter into an era of fundamental civic and economic unrest a transformation that would start somewhere around 2010. The prediction was that the 2020s would be a decade of crisis and climax. On what basis did they know that this would be taking place and did they make such a claim? Powell and Strass went back over 2000 years and observed a reoccurring cycle in human history. Approximately every 80 to 100 years, there were four major periods, each approximately 20 years in duration. A period of prosperity, a period of awakening, a period of unraveling, and finally, a period of crisis. These four cycles comprise history's seasonal rhythm of growth, maturation, entropy and destruction, and are called turnings. Each period also had a corresponding personality type that was born and would assume leadership positions in each turning. Their opinions and perspectives about their world would be shaped and formed by the time period or turning in which they were born. These were known as prophets, nomads, heroes, and artists. The most recent cycle or first turning began after World War II, from about 1946 to about 1963. It was the golden age of growth in America following the war. It was followed by a second turning known as a period of awakening. That began about 1963 and went into the 1980s. It was the hippie era, an age of youth activism with challenges to the established institutions of the time. Following the awakening is the 20 year period known as an unraveling, a period of division in our society, a loss of trust in our government and institutions. This period was the 20 years from about 1983 to about 2008. Beginning about 2008, 2010, we entered into the period we are in now. It is called a fourth turning. A fourth turning is a period of crisis where old institutions are torn down and rebuilt in response to a threat of what is thought to be about the nation's very survival. Fourth turnings, however, are new founding moments. In American history, it is a time of refreshing and redefining our national identity. So in the cycles of history, let's go back 80 years from the ending of the last crisis, World War II in 1945, and it takes us back to the American Civil War. Let's go back 80 more years, and we're back to the American Revolution. So you can see how this cycle of history works. In each 80 year saculum, there was a 20 year period of crisis, 
followed by a new period of prosperity, followed by a 20-year awakening, followed by a 20-year unraveling, and back again to a period of crisis, a fourth turning. It was Winston Churchill who said, the further you look back in history, the better you can see forward. So looking forward, if we take and add 80 years to the end of World War II, it brings us to our present. These 80 year cycles are consistent and have been consistent for over 2000 years of human history. So why are things so today? Why so much chaos? We are currently living in a fourth turning, a time of crisis, but also a time of birthing. The fourth turning is history's discontinuity. It ends one epic and it begins another. Just as floods replenish souls and fires rejuvenate forests, a fourth turning cleans out society's exhausted elements and creates an opportunity for fresh growth, beginning anew. Class of 20, you are standing in the lightning at a moment of creation. A new age is about to be born and you will be leading it. The generation of young adults that are born in a crisis period and come of age during a fourth turning is known as a hero generation. Those young adults who lived as youth in the Great Depression of the 1930s and fought World War II are referred to today as the GI generation, the last great generation. So what is your destiny? The current crisis period should come to an end sometime in the late 2020s, just as you will be assuming leadership roles in your respected fields of study. It is your destiny to lead. What will you do? The choices and decisions you make will make a difference. You have to decide what kind of difference you want to make, but it is your generation, it is you, who will determine our future. You are the next greatest generation. Your destiny in the reoccurring cycle of history is to be the leaders during the next golden age and era in American history, the next first turning. In the reoccurring historical cycles, first turnings are periods that refresh and redefine our national identity, restoring trust in our government, new civic pride, a return to a sense of community where people care about each other. But leading us to the future, how will you know what to do? So much fake news, what's the truth? What do you listen to? The essence of your education at Pfeiffer University lies in the core principle of servant leadership defined as hearts that lead by putting others before themselves and putting belief to action. Putting belief into action to be a servant leader, we first have to lead ourselves. And that requires us to love, to listen, and to have courage. The greatest servant leader of all time, Jesus, came to adulthood in a fourth turn, a time of crisis, to teach us to live our lives in a world of paradox, a world of crisis, good versus evil, love. Christ taught that if we are to live a life and create a world that is to our full potential, we must live a life and create a world based on love. But we witness in the life of Christ that a life based on love involves sacrifice and struggle. You cannot live the life of a servant leader and not have struggle. But it's this struggle that gives meaning and purpose 
to your lives. Lives with dignity, honor, lives that will make our world a better place. God asked his servant leaders, in particular, a hero generation, to be resolute in their willingness to sacrifice for and love thy neighbor, especially the ones who are not easy to love and that offend us. It is living a life that has genuine love for another human that gives our lives meaning, unselfish love, like the love of a parent for their child, for God's unconditional love for us. Being a servant leader requires having the kind of love that allows putting others before yourself. You become servant leaders and you will find meaning and purpose in your life when you make your work about your love for people. Your work should be about more than money. Use your education to go out in the world to serve people, your community, Moving humanity forward based on love, making a difference in the lives of others. Being a servant leader requires the kind of love that listens to people. Listen to people you may not like. Listen to people who are telling you things that you may not agree with or want to hear. But in so doing, you will bring dignity to yourself and civility to your relationship with other people. Listening is an act of love. Being a servant leader is having the kind of love that gives courage. Courage to act and do the right thing in difficult times. To stand against greed, bias, and injustice. Courage is about listening to God. Having faith in God's love and trust in God's will working in your life. Fear is the opposite of courage and represents a lack of faith in God. Fear will hold you captive. It will prevent you from being the servant leader that is free to choose and take action in a time of crisis. You will need courage to lead. We have been here before. Amid massive change and uncertainty, there is comfort in knowing that history does repeat itself. We have faced and survived challenges before and our history teaches us there are blue skies beyond the clouds, even on the most dismal of our days. Managing a crisis is one of the things that a servant leader does. Finding their way by following their values. Knowing that we have been here before in our human history gives us hope, gives us confidence. When difficult decisions face you, ask for God's help. Servant leaders also need the help of others that share your values and your faith and work in fellowship with you. We humans are social creatures and we naturally look to others for connection and assurance. When we are on our own, we are vulnerable to threats. But with the help of God and in fellowship with others, we are strong and we put our beliefs into action, being servant leaders. Servant leaders don't succeed on their own and servant leaders cannot lead alone. The current crisis is not yet over. We have more challenges ahead. But whatever we face, on average, you people have about 80,000 hours in your careers that you can devote to doing something good, making a difference, solving some kind of problem. What comes of our future is about to be placed in your hands, and it is your destiny to lead. I have lived for 71 years, almost a complete cycle of turnings. Born in the last period of prosperity, a first turning. Came to youth in an awakening, adulthood in an unraveling, and now a senior in the current fourth turning. 
With a little luck, I hope to live long enough to witness your generation leading us into the next turning. Soon, some global event will signal the beginning of the new age. Might this be the event that finally brings humanity to understand that we are all in this world together? Will you be the generation that brings about a new type of thinking where humanity finally comes to realize there is more to being gained by working in cooperation than competition? Could this possibly be what the next first turning will be like? You might just be the hero generation that finally gets us there and moves humanity to the place of peace on earth and goodwill toward all. Go be servant leaders, putting others first, putting belief into action. Be humble, self-aware, leading with love, listening, having courage, and don't walk alone. To some generations, much is given. Of others, much is expected. You are about to have your rendezvous with your destiny. Carpe diem, class of 2022, seize this opportunity to make a difference. Have a vision. Make good things happen. And remember, God's the master. We're the servants. You were born for this moment. Peace be with you. May God's blessings love and guide you on your journey. God bless. Thank you. No, that's all right. It is my privilege at this point to present the Senior Scholastic Achievement Award. It is certainly an honor and a privilege to award the highest academic honor any student can receive at Pfeiffer University. Achieving this award demonstrates that a student has the highest grade point average of any student in the graduating class. This year's recipient achieved a 4.0 while earning a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice and a Bachelor of Arts in Counseling and Human Services and Psych Psychology and three additional minors. That's an overachiever. This student spent last summer interning at UNC Wilmington with a professor studying neuroscience. Out of this research came numerous papers. She was listed as the second and third author on several, but first author of a paper entitled Learning from the Archives to Take Away from Archiving the Work of Roger W. Sperry. She has been invited to present her paper at the annual meeting of the American Psychological Association, Division II, in August. This fall, she will study clinical neuroscience at the uh, at Florida Institute of Technology. On behalf, on behalf of the Pfeiffer University family, I am honored to present this award to Kayla Miller. Please join me in congratulating <laughs> Kayla. Please come forward. Congratulations. Thank you. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degree please rise? Mr. President, 
These students have completed all degree requirements at Pfeiffer University and have been approved by the faculty. And I am happy to present to them, present them to you at this time in order that you might confer upon them the baccalaureate degree. Thank you, Dr. Mina. By the authority vested in me by the faculty and the Board of Trustees of Pfeiffer University, by the United Methodist Church, and by the state of North Carolina, I am privileged to confer upon you and each of you the baccalaureate degree with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining, given this day in Meisenheimer, North Carolina, the 14th day of May in the year of our Lord. 2022. Graduates, please come forward to receive your diploma. Victoria Lynn Abernathy. Evan Allen Addison, summa cum laude. We understand your exuberance uh, at uh, each graduate receiving their degree. Uh, sometimes after the graduate's name is called, uh, a special recognition uh, might be mentioned, such as Evans, uh, summa cum laude. Uh, uh, let, we're so glad you're happy, uh, but we also, <laughs> we also want you to know uh, what wonderful work these graduates have done. So uh, if you can refrain your uh, exuberance uh, until just the right time, it would be just marvelous. Are we ready? We ready? We're we gonna give it a try this time. Okay. Hannah Lane Annis, summa cum laude. <laughs> Emmy Lizette Arguello Rodriguez. Kira Arnetta Beringer. Barbara Elena Gatan Stuckey. Amber Nicole Korn, magna cum laude. Alec Brent Bell, magna cum laude. Ayana Bellamy. <laughs> Brina Nicole Bentley. Candace Lee Barrier. <laughs> Sh 
Chevalier Denise Blair. Lauren Davis Bolton, magna cum laude. Aliyah Renee Bowman. Benjamin Thomas Bowman. Danielle Marie Boza. Derek Lee Bradshaw Jr. <laughs> Ashley Michelle Bragg, magna cum laude. Caleb Severin Bradiger. Dylan Lyndon Brown. Shannon Lynn Bullion. Kyara Taasia Burris. Christian Alfonso Cabrera Barrios. <laughs> Alyssa Nicole Campbell, cum laude. Debrisha Diane Campbell. Yeah. Taylor Joe Carroll, magna cum laude. Madison Daniel Carter, summa cum laude. <laughs> Dakota Ray Kahi, cum laude. Morgan Taylor Cecil, summa cum laude. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Emily Cameron Cole, cum laude. Robert Philip Conaway. Latasia Asset Davis. <laughs> Skylar Rose Decker, magna cum laude. Haley Drew Dixon, summa cum laude. Brady Thomas Dudley. Taylor Amaya Duncan. <laughs> Rebecca Elizabeth Dyer, magna cum laude. Haley Sharice Evans, magna cum laude. Kyle David Fabrizio, magna cum laude. Angelina Catherine Fardella, magna cum laude. <laughs> Michaela Colleen Fritz. James Earl Gober the third. <laughs> Joshua James Golt. Alejandro Gonzalez. <laughs> Allison Gonzalez, magna cum laude. Sydney Jane Gray, magna cum laude. <laughs> K. 
Catherine Guyette, summa cum laude. Tanner Blake Hare. Donnie Jawan Haight. Kareem Elijah Jaquan Harrison, summa cum laude. Alicia Dawn Herndon, cum laude. Taylor Grace Hicks, magna cum laude. Logan Emily Hill, summa cum laude. Wendy Lee Hopkins, summa cum laude. Grayson Scott Honeycutt, magna cum laude. Tanner Matthew Jackson, magna cum laude. Taekwon Jackson, magna cum laude. Maya Elizabeth Johnson. Sarah Elizabeth Johnson, magna cum laude. Jalen Maurice Jones. <laughs> Emily Grace King, cum laude. Lydia Blair Lamb, cum laude. Savannah Taylor Lambeth, magna cum laude. Jackson Parker Leck. <laughs> K. 
Caitlin Virginia Lee. Mariana Catherine Limley. Slovakia Nicole Lemon. Jacob Bradley Leone, cum laude. <laughs> Brittany Elizabeth Levy, cum laude. Ani Lynn Leinberger. <laughs> Carlin Matisse London. Sure, Lore, summa cum laude. Christina Nicole Love, summa cum laude. Devin Keith Ludwig, cum laude. Joseph S. Marsh. Noah Martindale. Christopher Alden Mock, cum laude. Natalie Nicole McKenzie, cum laude. <laughs> Kayla Blair Miller, summa cum laude. Liliana Morales. <laughs> Justin Wendell Morgan, magna cum laude. Congratulations. Aislin Christine Odsather, magna cum laude. <laughs> Crystal Michelle Ortiz Rodriguez.
Tempest Lorvet Owens. Jason Michael Pearson, magna cum laude. Matthew Garrett Peeler, summa cum laude. James Slicer Penny, summa cum laude. Alexander Joseph Pruitt. Emerson Kate Pusey. Brandon Lira Rangel. Mitchell Gray Reichert. Alexandria Nicole Reinhardt, cum laude. Billy Lewis Ricks, the third. <laughs> Diana Riera, cum laude. Riley Elizabeth Ritchie, magna cum laude. Talon Ahmad Rowe. Craig Lamont Saab, Jr. <laughs> Bibiana Sarmiento. Sean Lorenzo Scott. <laughs> Giovanna Medina Sedano.
Ashley Michelle Sheely, cum laude. Darby Ireland Cheryl, cum laude. Allison Taylor Smith. Lauren Faye Smith, cum laude. Cameron Riley Solomon, summa cum laude. Cynthia Andrea Steele. <laughs> Janet Tapia. Alec Ryan Taylor, magna cum laude. Joshua Michael Topper. Tracy Lynn Torres. <laughs> Taylor Rose Trexler. Courtney Logan Tucker, magna cum laude. JC Allman Tucker. Haley Noel Turner, summa cum laude. Drake Edward Vernon. Alexis Elizabeth Walter, cum laude. Lauren Grace Weisensell, summa cum laude. Aaron Tucker Welch, cum laude.
Samira Ann Bore Wolf, cum laude. Aaron Michelle Zelinsky. Diana Ilbea Zavala, cum laude. Jonathan Richard Morris. Joseph Blake Weinbarger. Jason Juarez Leva. Anel Silva Munoz. Jackson Kyle Hanrahan, magna cum laude. Hadia Hammonds. Sophia Brooke Ely. Will the candidates for the master's degrees please rise? Mr. President, these students have completed all degree requirements at Pfeiffer University and have been approved by the faculty and I am happy to present them to you at this time in order that you might confer upon them their master's degrees. Thank you, Dr. Minot. By the authority vested in me by the faculty and board of trustees of Pfeiffer University, by the United Methodist Church, and by the state of North Carolina, I am pleased to confer upon you the master's degree with all of the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining, given in Meisenheimer, North Carolina, this 14th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2020. Two, would you please come forward to receive your diploma? Donna Jean Albright.
Carmen Alston Alexander. Miyagi Alvarez. Stephanie Armstrong. John Pierre Baldwin, Jr. Catherine Miller Barrio. <laughs> Laurel Idol Barnett. Gregory Thomas Blazer. Alexandria Bowie. Gary Butler. Christina Marie Canuto. Abigail Salto Croom. Kendall Morgan de India. Shayna Doles. <laughs> Kayla Donnelly. David Wesley Durham. Jonathan Tyler Glover. Ryan Patrick Hall. Elsie Eggers Henderson.
Ashley Marie Hill. Corinne Danielle Hudson. <laughs> Janae Massey. Wendy Lynn McMee. Nicole Carolyn Muller. Rachel Kennedy Nance. Lisa Parker. Darwin Ramirez. <laughs> Nadia Sue Hussein Rayen. Jolene Louise Rhodes. D'Angelo Robinson. Caroline Hunter Rogers. <laughs> Natalyn Elizabeth Sackiel. Elizabeth Saucedo. <laughs> Robert Schwartz. Michelle Dion Shores.
Emily Sparrow. Cheryl Marie Steele. Mackenzie Swetnam. Pedro Alejandro Torres Munibar, the third. Latoya Walker. August Renee Williams. LaShonda Dean Wood. Jonathan Christian Atkinson. Nicholas John Ruggiero. Emily Alves. Would all graduates please stand? Would the rest of you stand and join them in the singing of the alma mater? And I will back away from the microphone. Thank you. 
Thank you.